Today in the Physics Funhouse, we are investigating batteries. Not pretend batteries or battery emulators, but actual physical batteries that you may be familiar with. So in this circuit, which is kind of complicated, let me explain what's happening here. I've got a single light bulb that is going to be connected to this battery in this loop right here. Um, right now the circuit is broken at this point right here, but this light bulb is just going to be part of its own loop with the battery. When I connect it, light bulb should turn on something like that. And that light bulb is going to be an indication of what's happening to the battery today. In this branch, which currently has an open switch, I've got two additional light bulbs in parallel and just two more so that I can get a lot of current going through this branch. And so what I want you to observe is what happens to the brightness of this bulb right here. Let's see if I can hold that upward when I connect this part of the switch and draw current through these bulbs. So here we go. We're going to close this switch in three, two, one. So what you should have noticed is when I close this switch and now have current going through this part of the circuit, the brightness of this bulb went down. Let's try that again. So switch open. It's pretty bright. Close the switch. The brightness of this one went down. We can hide this one so we can not have that thing's brightness interfering. One more time. Switch open. Switch closed. And then open again. So the question today is, why did that happen? Why did drawing more current from the battery cause this light bulb to get dimmer? That's not a property of the circuits or any fundamental rule of circuits. It's a property of the battery. Uh, I'm going to bring a voltmeter to our little party. And I'm going to clip the voltmeter leads across our battery. Okay, so if we clip a voltmeter into our circuit, I just clip this voltmeter across the battery. So this is measuring the voltage of the battery. With nothing connected to the circuit, the voltage is 1.52 volts. When I connect the light bulb, just the single light bulb, to our circuit, Notice that the voltage of the battery dropped just a little bit as a result of drawing current from it. And so because the charges cannot be generated in that chemical reaction fast enough, we get a drop in the available energy that could be supplied to something else. So when it's not having any current drawn from it, it's about 1.52. With current being drawn from it, it drops by a tenth of a volt. If I close this switch, and I draw even more current from it by having another loop, notice that the voltage drops even more. If I were to add some more circuit elements to draw even more current, that red resistor dropped it by just a little bit, the more current that I draw from my, my battery, the lower the voltage is going to be. Eventually, you'll reach a point where the voltage of the battery reaches zero, at which point it's not possible to draw any more current from the battery. It reaches some maximum current level that the battery can produce. So let's investigate this in a little bit more detail um, and collect some data of current and potentials with a 9-volt battery and see what that looks like. So here's how we do this lab. I've got a 9-volt battery right here, and the 9-volt battery is connected to a voltmeter. That's the black and red alligator clips over there. And here's my voltmeter right here currently measuring a relatively steady voltage of about 8.46 volts. So a 9 volt battery should measure about 9 volts. Um, it'll be over 9 volts when it's brand new. This is just the best one that I have currently in my collection. Um, the yellow and white wires are running from the battery to this circuit down here, which is basically just a snake of resistors. And so the yellow wire is clipped over here, and then the other yellow wire runs into my ammeter right here out the blue wire, and then the blue wire leads current to just this kind of snake of resistors. And then I'll eventually connect the white wire to that and then back to the 9-volt battery. And so the reason I've set this up this way is so I can quickly move my white alligator clip from here to here to here and get a variety of measurements um, from my circuit. Because I want to get a bunch of voltages 
as a function of current. The last one over here is red, just to kind of keep the current down a little bit while still allowing me to change it up quite a bit. So I'm going to do this quickly because the voltage of the battery, you may notice it's kind of going up a little bit, um, is going to drop not only due to the current, but also due to the fact that the battery is going to heat up a little bit as I do this. And so I'm going to do this quickly, and then we can go back and get the data from the video once we do all the measurements. So I'm going to do my best to keep my hands out of the way here. So the white alligator clip is the only thing that's going to be moving. We're going to start off with a big resistance and work our way to smaller resistances and therefore higher currents. So here we go. And then there's our last one. So at about 7.3, 7.2 ish volts, I get a current of 0.35 amperes out of my battery. Notice the battery voltage is still dropping just a little bit. That voltage is going to drop as it heats up a little bit, which I don't want to leave it heating up too long. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it. So let's replay it back and look and collect the data, and I'll organize that into a table for you guys next. So now if we look at our data from our 9 volt battery, I've got current here and terminal voltage over here. And when I graph terminal voltage, the y-axis and current on the x-axis, I get this really nice looking straight line that kind of slopes down. Now the way that Excel um, default graphs things, it makes it have the narrowest range possible really. So this graph shows us that it's linear and we could get some um, analysis from this graph, but I made this one over here that kind of stretches the x-axis or excuse me the y-axis so that it goes all the way down to zero and I did that so we could see the intercepts real clearly and so here's that range of data that we collected if I'd have kept drawing bigger and bigger currents from that we could extrapolate this down all the way to a maximum current of about two and a quarter amperes down here so somewhere around 2.25 or so amperes, that battery voltage is going to drop all the way to zero if this linear trend continues. The y-intercept is about 8.5 right here. That would give us the terminal voltage of the battery, which is what we measured it to be um, when we didn't have any current being drawn from the battery. So getting the best fit line and then getting the equation for that, I get a y-intercept of about 8.6, which is very close to what we actually measured that terminal voltage to be. And then the slope right here tells me the internal resistance of the battery. So 3.9, almost 4 ohms of internal resistance, that's the internal resistance of the battery. And so we can use that data to tell two things. One, three things actually. The EMF would be 8.6, that's the voltage of the battery when there's no current drawn from it. The maximum current from the battery, about two and a half, or two and a quarter rather, amperes, and the internal resistance of the battery, just a little bit less than four ohms. So here we're going to measure the internal resistance of a D cell battery. The D cell battery should have a voltage of about 1.5 volts. So I've got these two alligator clips, the black and red, connected to the voltmeter over here, and that's reading just a slight bit over 1.5 volts, which is exactly what it should read. Um, on the other side, I've got a yellow alligator clip coming out of there, leading to my ammeter, and then the blue wire is connected here to the circuit. What I'm going to do right here is just add different values of resistance. So I've got a red resistor, I've got a blue resistor, and then a couple of green resistors that I'm going to start adding in parallel to each other so that I can get a relatively broad range, range of electric potentials. So we're going to start with just a red resistor. So with zero current, I get a voltage of about 1.53. Now the red resistor, so 0 0.07, 1.49. 
let's do the blue resistor. So lower resistance, more current, 1.14, 1.45. Now let's do a green resistor, less resistance still, so more current, 0 0.26, 1.38. Let's add another one in parallel, 0.47 amperes, 1.25 volts. Let's add another one, 0 0.65, 1.14 volts. We can add some more, I'm kind of running out of room on the circuit board. Let's add some wires and go over here. And let's put two greens in parallel on this guy. All right, so current of 0.78, 1.06 volts. I think we can fit one more on here. 0.89 and 0.99 volts. Okay, so now we can graph that data and measure the internal resistance of our D cell battery.